Ever felt like your fellow citizens lost their rationality, that they all slowly gave in to some kind of ideological force that contradicts both their values and their interests? That they gave in to some kind of harmful movement and that their identity and your perception of them completely changed for the worse? And does that make you feel isolated? Eugène Ionesco wrote many brilliant plays. I saw two of them, which I absolutely loved, but I never had the chance to see his most famous and probably most critical play he wrote, Rhinoceros. Here's a quick two-minute summary. Act 1. The main protagonist, Béranger, who is introduced to us as a miserable alcoholic, meets his friend Jean, who poses through his eloquence and confidence as the antithesis of Béranger. Jean scolds his friend for his lifestyle until, suddenly, a rhinoceros runs through their French village. When a second rhinoceros runs through the village and kills a cat, the members of the village chaotically mourn the death of the cat, but also fight about if there were two rhinoceroses or if there was only one who ran through twice. People fight about the amount of horns the rhinoceroses had, if they were Asian or African rhinoceroses, and finally, Béranger and Jean fight. Act 2. We're at Béranger's job in an office. He and other colleagues, including his love interest, Daisy, argue about the existence of the rhinoceros. One of the colleagues rejects journalists, not believing the story reported on the rampaging exotic animal. Suddenly, a lady storms in the office, claiming to be chased by a rhinoceros. She's the wife of an employee who's recently been sick. Upon close inspection, the rhinoceros is the wife's husband. We suddenly learn that people in the village are turning into rhinoceroses. At the end of Act 1, Béranger and Jean fought. Béranger then decides to pay a visit to Jean to apologize, though through their conversation and argument again, Jean also turns into a rhinoceros. Act 3 in Act 3, Béranger has a nightmare and he's paranoid about becoming a rhinoceros. His colleague, Dudard, visits him trying to minimize the fact that people are turning into rhinoceroses. Oh, stop thinking about it. Really, you attach too much importance to the whole business. And later, more annoyed, Oh, why can't you leave them alone? They're not doing you any harm. Really, you're obsessed by them. It's not good for you. You're wearing yourself out. You've had one shock, why look for more? You just concentrate on getting back to normal. The conversation between Béranger and Dudar is incredibly relevant. Béranger can't stand rhinoceroses and believes they're a threat, while Dudar believes that you can just live and let live. People are entitled to their opinions, and if they want to be rhinoceroses, so be it. When Béranger learns that his boss became a rhinoceros, he's baffled, and Dudar says, How intolerant you are. You're getting all head up. Our opinions may not exactly coincide, but we can still discuss the matter peaceably. These things should be discussed. Béranger tells him, you'll be siding with the rhinoceroses before long. He was right. Dudar becomes a rhinoceros. In fact, everybody has, except for Béranger and Daisy, his love interest. Daisy is now his girlfriend. They are passionate, they argue, and she increasingly builds a tolerance for rhinoceroses. She admires the rhinoceroses, and Béranger slaps her. He regrets it. She leaves and becomes herself a rhinoceros. Béranger tries to become a rhinoceros himself, but is unable to. So, he rebels. I'll take on the whole of them. I'll put up a fight against the lot of them, the whole lot of them. I'm the last man left, and I'm staying that way until the end. I'm not capitulating. I'm not capitulating are the final words of the play. Ionesco wrote absurdist plays, and Rhinoceros is part of the Théâtre de l'Absurde. However, being absurd doesn't mean devoid of meaning. Yes, men turning into rhinoceroses and people tolerating it and even defending it is absurd, but the rhinoceros is a metaphor with a lot of meaning. 
You probably already know what the rhinoceros stands for, and it's not a coincidence that this video is being published on the same week Donald Trump won the 2024 election. We don't need to look very far to know what the rhinoceros stands for. UNESCO made it extremely clear. University professors, students, intellectuals were turning Nazi, becoming Iron Guards one after another. Iron Guards are Romanian fascists, UNESCO was Romanian. We were 15 people who used to get together to find arguments to discuss, to try to find arguments opposing theirs. It was not easy. From time to time, one of the group would come out and say, I don't agree at all with them, to be sure, but on certain points I must admit, for example, the Jews. And that kind of comment was a symptom. Three weeks later, that person would become a Nazi. He was caught in a mechanism. He accepted everything. He became a rhinoceros. Towards the end, it was only three or four of us who resisted. What makes this play so relevant isn't that it states that people turn into fascists, as characters in the play turn into rhinoceroses, but it's relevant because it underlines how people turn into fascists. I won't go into what fascism is, as I'd like one day to dedicate a whole video to it, since I'm quite obsessed with that topic. However, most people associate I'm saying most, but maybe I'm wrong about that, but they associate fascism or Nazism or the far right or many nationalisms to evil, which isn't wrong, but which often creates the confusion that only evil people can become fascist. Therefore, if we aren't surrounded by evil people, then we don't have to worry about fascism, right? UNESCO shows that anyone can be a fascist. Sure, there might be some dispositions that make you more prone to fascism, but in the end, anyone, or close to everyone, can be a fascist. But that still doesn't explain how people turn into fascists. Well, there can be many different reasons which make individuals turn to fascism, but UNESCO explains why people in general turn to fascism by comparing it to a virus. Rhinoceritis, or fascism, spreads if we don't socially try to contain it. When the first rhinoceros is spotted, most people are outraged and don't believe it, yet they don't do anything about it. They talk about it, try to understand it, they debate about it. Does it have one or two horns? Is it from Africa or Asia? Yet nobody addresses the problem of the rhinoceros, though it clearly is a problem. It feels that because it's so unbelievable, so outrageous, we feel like it could never be normalized. The rhinoceros problem is an obvious problem, and because it's so obviously problematic, it will solve itself. Somebody will solve it. Something will happen. But then nothing happens. The day after the spotting, people debate about the rhinoceros even existing, and that same day, Béranger's friend, Jean, turns into a rhinoceros. What started as an unbelievable and outrageous event became more and more tolerated and slowly became normalized. This normalization gives credibility to the rhinoceroses. There's a recurring theme in the book where people keep bringing up how morality is subjective and how truth is subjective. Who are you to say that you know the truth? Who are you to say that something is moral or not? This relativity, at least as demonstrated in the play, puts fascism or any other ideology on an equal playing field. But rhinoceroses don't really care about what the truth is as long as it allows them to take over. Logic and debate, as demonstrated by UNESCO, doesn't work. Rhinoceroses speak a totally different language. They reject logic, enlightenment values, and humanism. The discussion, which I already mentioned in Act 3 between Béranger and Dudard, best illustrates this. Fascism, or rhinoceritis, which at first was seen as an obvious wrong, is now defended as a valid perspective, one that should be considered with an open mind, one that should be discussed and debated. Dudar isn't a rhinoceros, but he does preach tolerance for their ideas and bemoans Béranger for being so intolerant towards them. Rhinoceritis in this context then spreads. The media, the government, and even the firefighters have become rhinoceroses. UNESCO wrote this play having witnessed a fair dose of fascism. He saw what tolerating fascism leads to. He knows the consequences of not calling a fascist a fascist. But he was wrong about one thing. There will never be a last man left. Béranger, as did UNESCO, feels alone. 
his friends, colleagues, and even his girlfriend turned into rhinoceroses. He had to debate with friends who tried to defend the validity of living among rhinoceroses. This feeling of seeing your close ones turn into fascists, sometimes unknowingly, and not being able to communicate your concerns is terrifying and isolating. Being surrounded by people who aren't outraged by the rise and normalization of fascism around you can also make you feel like you don't belong. It makes you feel excluded. All right, going a bit off script, but um, I remember seeing that Béranger was feeling uh, crazy. He felt like something might be wrong with him because everyone was accepting fascism around him, and he was the only one who was uh, kind of paranoid, kind of going, uh, kind of obsessing over the idea that fascists were 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 popping up around him. And uh, because of that, it feels like he's he feels like he's kind of crazy because everyone around him don't really care, or he doesn't feel like they care. Well, they don't. They turn into rhinoceroses. It's like this collective gaslighting of telling him, no, 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 things are fine. Don't worry. I don't know if that's gaslighting. Is it? No, no, it's not gas. There's like this alienation from society in the sense that you have a preoccupation and everyone else doesn't. So it makes you feel kind of crazy to have that preoccupation. And I feel like <laughs> maybe a lot of us feel like that. All right, let's go back to the script. I'm sure many of us who struggle with this feeling dream of how easy it would be to be a fascist. Béranger says it himself that he'd like to be a rhinoceros, that he wouldn't have to struggle. At the very least, if only we could stop caring, to just live and let live, how easy would that be? But it's not really a choice, is it? It really makes you feel isolated, alone, and powerless. In the past few years, so many things which were once unthinkable and even laughable have become tolerated, normalized, taken seriously, considered, and even voted in. I've been having a hard time, as I imagine you have as well, with the rise of fascism around the world. Having to fight against climate change was already an impossible task, and now we have to fight climate change and fascists who don't believe it even exists. I don't know how to end this video. I don't want to fake being hopeful to end on an inspiring note that will make you subscribe and come back for more videos. It's exhausting. I'm tired of hearing, oh, don't give up. Everything will be fine if we keep fighting. It sucks to end a video this way, but it's a video on fascism. What did you expect? All right, I'll, I'll still try my best at inspiring hope. Two things. First, no matter what, you can't give up. I don't mean it in the sense of the world depends on you, you can't give up. What I mean by you can't give up is that if you care enough about fascism for it to make you feel terrible, then you literally can't give up. You can't choose to not care about it. Your indignation will remain whether you like it or not. That might not be hopeful and kind of terrible actually, but then you think of the second point, which is you're not alone. Plenty of people can't give up neither. They all physically can't give up because they're so indignated, just as you are. I don't know. Try to find comfort in that, I guess. If there's other ways to find comfort, put them in the comments. I'm not doing that. I'm actually interested. In I'm not doing that for, for, for engagement or whatever. I actually want to hear what you, th what you think. All right, so that was the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I felt like I really need to do this. This is not like the announcement video that I promised at the end of last video. Um, it's coming, the other, <laughs> that, that video. Um, yeah, I've been doing like a one video a month that I've been really enjoying. So yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I've been preferring this rhythm a lot more and been doing other things, which I'll talk about in probably the next video. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll be the right next video. In any case, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'd like to thank Roman Brandel, X Towns, and all my other patrons for supporting the channel. If you also want to support, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. Thank you.